Do you have a business where you sell your time or a service to people that's based on your time? Maybe you're a video editor or a consultant or you have some kind of business like that. If you do, then uh, what I have for you is a spreadsheet that will um, tell you how profitable you are depending on the hours that you have sold and, and all these other little variables. Uh, my name is Morgan and I am a small business consultant and I um, created this spreadsheet for one of my clients who was trying to figure out what's the lowest price he could charge and stay profitable. So I had built a more complicated spreadsheet and I simplified it down into this. So. Um, we can take a look at this. This is a. It is. I'm calling it a break-even spreadsheet, but it actually just tells you, you know, it it shows you how, if you could be profitability profitable, you know, at with under these certain conditions. So um, this spreadsheet has three modules, and each one uh, does something different and tells you something different, and each one of them works together. So let me just, let's just jump right into it really quick and I'll just tell you how it works. Up here is where you were going to put, this is, uh, everything's calculated monthly. So this is where you would put how many hours that you have sold in a particular month. Right here, I think is one of the most important concepts. Uh, when you're selling your hours, like let's say that you're a video editor and you and someone gives you a project and they say, okay, yeah, I'm going to give you, uh, you know, you're going to do this project. The project will take me five hours. Well, that's true that it'll take you five hours of video editing, but it'll also take you other time doing all this other stuff. So um, I've broken it down into admin, project management, sales, and big picture hours. These are all the different things that you'll need to do when you are, you know, running a business besides just the thing that you're selling. So what I tell my clients to do is keep track of their time in these five buckets for let's say between a month or three months or if you're already keeping track of your time if you just have a sense of it and you want to get a rough thing basically here you're gonna just put the relative percentages of your time that you're doing your thing so for example when I was doing video work uh, I would say I spent 60 percent of my time um, actually doing the video work uh, I did probably, yeah, 15% of my time doing admin. Uh, I did a lot of sales. That was probably 15%. I did very little big picture thinking, even though I wish I had done more. And I really think, where does this rest you? You can see here I'm at 107. I really think that probably it would come out of here. Um, and I would say that roughly this is what it looked like. So, um, and then this is where you're going to keep track of how many hours you're selling in a month. Let's just say that you're selling a hundred hours a month. Um, you would know because you could look back in your books and see how many hours you sold last month or, you know, do an average of a few months or you can put whatever number in there you want to see. You just kind of, you want to see if it's profitable, how much you can sell. Another thing that you can do is see, um, you know, the more hours, you know how like if you sell more hours how is that going to contribute to your bottom line oh you see I'm a little bit higher here one of these uh, five percent's got to come out of somewhere let's take it out of here and here so now we are, we're at a hundred percent okay so all of this does is calculate kind of the total number of hours that you have estimated and it also shows that for each hour that you sell you're also going to do 0.27 of an hour of admin, 0.24 of project management, and so on and so forth. This little thing here is just to keep you cognizant of even though you're selling an hour, you're doing more work than the hours that you're selling. Um, and then that gets calculated in here too. So down here is the price per hour that you're selling. So when I edit video, when I used to edit video, I would charge $100 an hour, <clears throat> and uh, that's what, th that was, you know, 
all-encompassing. It was for my equipment, for my time, for my expertise, for the project management, for the whole thing. So right here is where you're going to put the price per hour that you're charging your customer. And then over here is where you're going to put, if you are paying yourself like an hourly wage. So often service businesses will do this. They will pay themselves, you know, whatever it is, um, some kind of a wage, let's say $25 an hour, while um, they're, what is that? That's not supposed to be there. Um, while they're working, and then um, when they do have profits, they'll cash themselves out of the profits at a certain interval or, you know, however that goes. So this shows you that you sold 100 hours, but you actually worked 181.82 hours because of all this other stuff that you had to do. And it shows you that your total revenue, if you sold 100 hours at $100 an hour, you made $10,000 that month. And you paid yourself in wages, or if you're subcontracting it out, or if you're a service business that has two or three people or whatever, uh, this is how much you spent in wages. And this is how much money, they call it the contribution. And um, contribution, really, in this context, is just a subtotal of revenue minus wages. If you were selling something like you were selling, I don't know, baskets or pocket knives or whatever, um, this number would be more complicated, but in a service business where basically you're just selling your time, the this is it's just a subtotal of that, and it happens to be called a contribution. Now the third module here is your fixed costs. I have it broken down into these common <clears throat> into these common baskets here. Your business often might change. You might not have a drop box. Drop box. You might not have a space or whatever. You uh, you might be spending different amounts. Remember that these are monthly amounts. If you have, for example, your accountant, you might pay on a yearly fee. <clears throat> it seems 525 a month seems pretty high for an accountant. That would put them around six hundred six thousand dollars a year so let's just throw some numbers in here you're obviously going to throw the numbers that you're put in here let's say that you have a thousand dollars for rent office supplies depreciation if you do it many small businesses don't have a depreciation schedule um, that's there if you buy a lot of equipment it helps you to value it over a period of time if you're not doing that, then you know you can zero that out. It's not a problem. Website 317 a month seems high unless you're you know have a web heavy business. I think I'm doing my web service is something like 250 a year or maybe it's 200 a year. So I'll just put let's say it's 25 bucks a month. Again, I'm just putting these numbers here that are arbitrary. I'll put another you know 20 bucks here a month for something, and then down here we have these are all things that we call fixed costs. They're fixed costs because they always stay the same. So over here we're importing the contribution here and then we're subtracting the fixed cost from the contribution and we're getting a number called an EBIT. That's the earnings before interest and taxes. That's really just a subtotal that says this is um, you know the num this subtotal here minus your fixed cost equals your EBIT which is just another subtotal. Now, most of you don't have interest. So, <clears throat> um, because uh, in small companies, they don't really, they don't, they're not keeping large sums of money in, the money in the stock market or whatever. So, here's over here where you would kind of put in your tax rate to, you know, you got a 20%, that got federal taxes and city taxes. This could be city and state or any other taxes um, that you're paying. Uh, I have a rate here. Um, obviously, rates vary greatly depending on where you are and how big you are. This is something that you would put in your historical data. And then at the very end here, boom, you have your profit for the month. So let's really quick go back and take a look at the flow again. We have our hours sold. We have, this is the percentage of work that we're doing here. We have our price per hour, we have our wage per hour, this is what we're paying ourselves. This is revenue minus wages here. Um, and then that goes over here. These are your fixed costs that you've laid out. <clears throat> then you have the contribution, which is this subtotal, minus the fixed cost, which is this. 
and then you have your EBIT, which is just another subtotal. We take out the taxes, and then you have your profit. It could be the case that you are not paying yourself an hourly wage, um, because if it's just you, I, that is a little bit of an overly complicated way to look at it. So we could just, if that is the case, you can just zero it out, and you could see, okay, if you're just keeping all the profit, then if you sell 100 hours at $100 an hour, and you have these fixed costs, then this is the amount of money that you would be making. So that's essentially how to use it. Um, you can see a lot of different things. Um, if you're looking for your break even, then you would just bring this number down until it was zero. So 60 is too low. You'd be losing money if you um, were charging $60 an hour. So let's try 63. Uh, 63 is pretty close. Okay, 64. Okay, so if you, it's in between 63 and 64. Uh, with this kind of a setup, <coughs> between 63 and 64 is where this number is going to be around zero. I'm just going to put 60. 3.5. I'm not sure if you need to be in what situation you would need to be more granular than this, um, but you could just change that number until this became zero. It also shows you the relationship between all of this stuff. If there's a way to get all this stuff down, um, to do spend less time on project management, sales, admin, and spend more of your time actually doing the work, that changes the relationship because then you have less total hours worked. So for example, there was a time when I was working for a company on a 1099 and I really didn't have to do a lot of this stuff. I basically had to do zero sales. Um, I had to do, I was a, being a project manager for them, but I didn't have to do any project management myself and, and I'm not charging them for big picture thinking. I basically spent I would say 5% of my time keeping my hours, um, you know, keeping my hours, sending them invoices, interfacing with them as from like one business to another. So in that respect, and I had very little cost because they were taking care of a lot of the things. I did have to buy some gear. Um, I had to buy a, um, a laptop. Um, I still had to have a business license. In my misc expenses, I had health care that I had to pay for, which was actually quite a bit of money. Let's say that was three. So let's just look at that scenario real quick. I had zero space cost. I had, um, I don't know, very little office supplies. Um, I did have to buy a laptop, um, which let's just say that we were depreciating at $100 a month. Um, again, um, depreciation is a little bit uh, complicated and you probably won't do it. Um, I did pay an accountant. Um, if you were to break that up over 12 months, I think I paid my accountant a few hundred dollars a year. So let's just say that that's $40 a month. I, again, I had to pay for my website and my business license. Um, I did have to pay for a Dropbox to interview, to interface with them. And then here were, this is my health care. I bet it was even more than that. And so then that's my stuff here. So, um, and also in that case, I kind of wasn't paying myself an hourly wage. And so if I were to sell them, and actually I was working for more like $30 an hour. So if you look at that, you say, okay, if I'm working a hundred dollars for, if I'm working a hundred hours for them and I'm charging them $30 an hour, this was a long time ago. You can see how all of that's going. I still have, it still shows that there's a pretty big impact of your fixed costs um, in your bottom line and your taxes. So I really only brought home um, 1,800. I mean, I guess I worked more than 100 hours. It was 40, 40, that would make it 80. I worked about full time, which is what, essentially 100 and, oh, I have a, I know, it's more than 160, it's something like 212. So even in this situation, if you're charging someone $30 an hour, which seems like a lot of money to make, in, in a way, um, you're still only making, you're still only bringing home that after your own fixed costs and your thing. Anyway, I'm going to put a link to this spreadsheet down in the bottom, and um, the spreadsheet itself is going to be locked, so all you need to do is make a copy, and you can do whatever you want with it. Um, 
if there's somebody that's really smart, one of the things that I've been trying to figure out how to do is to add all these numbers together and I want this number to always be zero and I want this number to show what your break even is. If you understand what that what I mean by that and if you're a math genius and you had to know how to do that, PM me and, and let's talk about it because I'd love to be able to figure it out and make it a true break even spreadsheet. Either way, the um, like I said, the link's down in the description if you like this please feel free to use it if you have any questions go ahead and email me morgan at gmail.com i'll write my email right here and that's how you can get a hold of me um thanks a lot and i hope that it this is very useful for you okay thanks bye